Okay, so it's the top of the hour, so I'll, I'll go ahead. We've already got 133 people online, which is great to see. Um, yeah, <laughs> so okay. um, just a brief introduction, first of all, my name is Ben Adam. I'm a renal pathologist um, at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada. And it's is my great um, honor and privilege to introduce this uh, first session in our renewed collaboration between the Renal Pathology Society and Glomcon. Uh, let's just start with what MPGN is. Uh, just and uh, you'll get into this in great detail, I, I promise you. So, but let's just start with it. What is MPGN? Like most most glomerular disease, the way I look I look at them, at least most glomerular nephritis are what I like to think of debris diseases. Things get deposited in the kidney in the glomerular capillary walls, and they lead to inflammation. It could be immunoglobulins, could be complement, could be fibrin, could be other things as well. But bottom line is, stuff shows up in the glomerulus and then you get inflammation. The glomerulus tries to respond to it with healing and then there's a resolving phase. The resolving phase is often manifested by these double contours and again we'll get into it. So, so the way I look at it, it is it's really a pattern of injury where you have both inflammation and you have resolving at the same time or maybe inflammation comes first and then you have resolving later but more often than not, it's a mixed batch of inflammation going on and resolving going on at the same time. Uh, so if you look at it in a little more detail, what is MPGN? The inflammatory part, like I mentioned, is the, is the proliferative. That's where the term MPGN comes from, membrane of proliferative glomerulonephritis. The proliferative portion is the P portion. And the resolving portion is the membrane or the M portion where you get the mesangial expansion with matrix and you get the double contouring. Uh, so those are the two, that's where the term comes from. The, the proliferative portion is the mesangial and the endocapillary hypercellularity. And then you have the thickening of the GBM and the mesangial expansion, uh, which is the membrane portion. Now, if you look at the old classic textbooks, at least uh, earlier on, maybe things have changed now, I haven't read the last uh, textbook, even uh, good textbooks like Heptenstall's. If you look at the immunofluorescence describing, uh, described uh, back in the early 2000s, it just stated that yes, the immunofluorescence was positive for immunoglobulins with or without C3, or C3 is often seen. And that was all the, the importance given to, to immunofluorescence microscopy. A lot of detail uh, went into the electron microscopy, uh, uh, sort of unfortunately, but in any case, uh, we as pathologists like to look at stuff in great detail and then come up with classifications and classifications. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So electron microscopy bottom line was, there were deposits. The deposits were present in the mesangium. They were present along the capillary walls. Most of the deposits are subendothelial, but there were also some subepithelial deposits. And like I mentioned, the big one was for MPG and you needed double contours. And believe me, we'll get into this in some more detail in a little bit. So this is what an MPGN looks like on light microscopy. Here, just for comparison, here's a normal glomerulus, and this is what an MPGN looks like on light microscopy. You have this mesangial expansion, sort of nodular, uh, with hypercellularity, you look uh, upwards into the capillary walls and you can see these big uh, double contours. There is cells that are stuck inside it. People like to call it mesangial interposition. I'm not sure if that's the right term. In any case, there is cellular material within these double contours. And this whole thing has a very lobular accentuation to it. It's well seen on this PAS section and on, and on the silver stains. You can see the double contouring much better on PAS and silver stains. So that's what this whole MPGN pattern is, or, or, or until recently it was called MPGN. We, we just called it membrane of proliferative glomerulonephritis as a disease entity in itself. So when I told you that, that the MPGN has a proliferative uh, component, so when you biopsy the patient and the and it, MPGN is uh, going through its proliferative uh, uh, look to it, this is what the glomerular capillary looks look like. It looks very busy. Uh, so you can see these subendothelial deposits, that's the white arrow. Uh, you can see some cellular material in there. We don't know if these are endothelial cells that are entrapped, maybe some mesangial cells, maybe some infiltrating portions of macrophages or neutrophils in there. In any case, there's a lot of cellular debris in there. And as the glomerulus tries to resolve, you can start seeing some new basement membrane material that's sort of coming here in between. And this is in trying to entrap the basement membranes. Uh, the basement membranes are trying to entrap 
these deposits and the cellular debris, which is really causing the inflammation, which is what is really driving the neutrophils and subsequently the monocytes to come in and sort of clear them out, but it drives the inflammation. So what the glomerulus is trying to do is it's trying to make new basement membrane material, just like an abscess. You have an abscess and you get a fibrous tissue ring around it in exactly the same phenomenon. Basement membrane material is being laid down, maybe by endothelial cells, maybe by mesangial cells. And, but this is where it looks very important.